So last year, I asked this specific question in one of my YouTube videos. Can an iPad Pro replace your desktop computer? And I think since more and more people are getting comfortable with the idea of just using iPads or tablets in lieu of actual desktop computers, I think it's worth revisiting this conversation. But to help us answer this question, we're also going to be looking at, I think, the most promising iPad accessory I've ever seen. So promising, in fact, that it just might be enough to persuade those people to fully commit or embrace the iPad lifestyle. This is the Studio Dock by Kensington. They sent this over to me so that I can give you a preview of what's to come. A 2021 CES Innovation Awards honoree, this docking station aims to address one of the major pain points of using iPads, which is the lack of ports. Of course, you can always buy dongles or attachments to address this issue. However, I think the Studio Dock does this in the form of functionality and convenience. And depending on how you look at it, maybe even adds a little bit of style. To me, it looks like a squished version of the Apple Pro Display XDR. Hmm. Using the grooves as guides, you simply slide the iPad in place and you're all set. And because the backplate is magnetic, it makes docking the iPad feel a lot less panicky. Once docked, you can rotate the iPad depending on how you want to use it. It also tilts up and down. And in case you're a giraffe, you can tilt it all the way up. The mechanism feels solid and the movement is smooth, which speaks to the build quality of the Studio Dock. It's mostly metal with little bits of plastic, at least high quality enough to make you feel good after spending $400 on this iPad 12.9 inch variant. But before you close that video, let's see what you actually get for that amount of money. Well, you get ports, lots of it, as a matter of fact, a 3.5 millimeter audio, USB-C, an Ethernet port and three USB-A ports, as well as an HDMI port, and of course, an SD card slot. But aside from that, you also get a charging mat built right into the base of the station for your compatible wireless devices. But wait, there's more. I've always wanted to say that. Coming sometime later this year from Kensington is an additional accessory that lets you also charge your Apple Watch. So the Studio Dock is a charger, a hub, and an iPad stand all rolled into one stylish and convenient package. But the big question is, does it actually work? So to see if it's any good or if it's actually any useful, I ran through a couple of different scenarios in which I just used the iPad and the Studio Dock, you know, to determine if it's actually feasible to replace my desktop computer. As a general iPad dock, I think it works really well. I like the extended height the stand gives as it feels a bit more like using an actual computer as opposed to a laptop or a tablet. And since this is the most versatile stand I've used, I really have no problems when it comes to viewing angles. But of course, this dock only really becomes more attractive to use when paired with a keyboard and a mouse connected wirelessly or through its numerous ports. With peripherals, I found that my experience using this versus a traditional desktop computer was just about as satisfying at least 90% of the time. Since I use Google Docs, spreadsheets and typing out documents aren't a problem for me. Accessing files from external drives using iPadOS has been greatly improved, but it's still not the best. Now, multitasking is still not that great to use, but at least I don't really need a lot of windows or apps open at once, at least most of the time. Watching media has always been an enjoyable experience for me on the iPad Pro because of its awesome screen. This can be further enhanced by connecting your favorite Bluetooth speaker or maybe even using headphones. 
With the Studio Dock ports, I was able to connect a microphone to record high quality audio, which is great for podcasters. The only hiccup I encountered is that sometimes when I have the microphone and headphone jack plugged in, the iPad doesn't seem to recognize it right away. I was able to fix this problem by simply turning the Studio Dock on and off. So it is an inconvenience, and I'm not really sure if it's a software issue or a hardware issue. However, this next scenario is something that I was really hoping this setup can do really well in, and that's Zoom calls. That doesn't seem to be the case. In my tests, the iPad can't recognize the microphone and headphones when using Zoom. I've already tried different connections and different headphones to no avail. Not sure if it's due to the iPad OS's limitations or just Zoom's incompatibility. Regardless, at this point, the best option I found was to simply use my AirPods. So the one thing that I do enjoy using this whole setup for is when it comes to photo editing. Now, for me, having an SD card slot is very, very crucial. It's critical and I find it hilariously frustrating that my $4,000 MacBook Pro doesn't even have one. Apple, for the love of everything, just give me my... Uh, anyway, using Lightroom to edit raw photos feels practically the same on my desktop. Once done editing, I can upload to Google Drive or go straight to Instagram and share it directly, which is kind of nice. In terms of Photoshop, the problem is a bit more tied to the app itself, but you can do some basic editing using it. Mobile video editing has come a long way and there are a few great apps to choose from such as LumaFusion, InShot, and Adobe Rush. I'm not going to get into the details, but the point I'm trying to make is that it can actually be done using this setup. This last scenario may be more niche, but you can also game with this setup using PlayStation's Remote Play. I connected my PlayStation controller to the iPad via Bluetooth and enabled Remote Play on my PS5. Since both devices are connected to my home network, the experience was pretty good. I didn't even notice any input lags. But how about connecting to an external monitor, you ask? Well, this is where I was also disappointed, but mainly because of the iPad. I have an LG Ultrawide and I can only use the HDMI port, not the USB-C since it's not a Thunderbolt port. And the problem is that I am only limited to mirroring what's on the iPad and not use the monitor as an actual extension, which basically means what I see on the iPad is what I see on the monitor, including the aspect ratio. So yeah, I'd say pointless and I'd prefer to use just the iPad on its own. So let's recap a bit. Good for general browsing, media consumption, capable of recording good audio, improved workflow for photographers, and possible to do some video editing, photo manipulation, and some light gaming, of course with some obvious limitations. The not so good. Zoom calls using an external microphone and wired headphones don't really work. The audio jack can be a bit finicky and the use of external monitors is kind of pointless unless you simply prefer a slightly larger view of your iPad screen. Personally, even with the nice stand, the multiple ports, and the built-in charging mat, I can't help but feel that the price range of $379 to $400, depending on what size you're getting, feels a bit steep. Also, maybe the fact that you can't use a case for your iPad while using the Studio Dock can be considered a negative. However, if you use an Apple Magic Keyboard when you need to be on the go, well, that might actually be a plus. But despite the limitations of the OS itself, the iPad has proven itself more and more capable as time goes on. And with the recent release of more affordable and more capable versions of Apple's tablet, it's not hard to see more and more people adapting to this type of lifestyle. So, can an iPad replace your desktop computer in the year 2021? I feel like we're getting closer to a yes than we are to a maybe or even a no. We'll see what 2022 holds, and I'm kind of really looking forward to that because I feel like by then we'll have a more definitive answer. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, I want to say thank you to Kensington for sending me a studio doc that I can test out. And although they sent me this product for free, they didn't pay me to create this video or to say nice things about their the product. So just a little bit of a disclaimer there. If you want to learn more about the Studio Doc, I'll be leaving a link down below in the description. And also, please don't forget to follow me on my other social media channels and interact with me. I would love to hear from you. So thanks again, and I hope to see you guys again real soon.